Hello, everybody. Come on in. Thanks for joining us on this here uh, Wednesday. Nice to see you and or your names, please. Uh, well, welcome to the 152nd Brooklyn Rail Wednesday Poetry Reading. We've got a terrific uh, reading for you today, curated by Joshua Escobar. The reading is called Never Enough, Queer Poetic Unmaking. Joshua will be reading and has also invited Mel Elberg, Jody Lynn, Vivian Storm, and Michelle DeTori to read uh, along with Josh. I will uh, turn things over to Joshua in just a second, but I'm going to give you a few other words. First, uh, thanks for being here. If you haven't been to one of these readings before, you might take a look at the chat um, from time to time. As each reader comes up, there'll be some links and inf uh, to, to information about their various works and publications and endeavors, and uh, also some information about the Brooklyn Rail. We do these readings every week. There's also a daily uh, talk series that this is part of, which is called The um, New Social Environment. And this is the 907th uh, episode of The New Social Environment, which is this weird, long, nonfiction, novel, genre-bending poetry thing that we're all sort of involved with every day and will never uh, escape. And um, <laughs> thanks again for being here. My name is Anselm Berrigan, and I uh, work on the series along with Chloe, Eleanor, and Carolyn, and I'm the poetry editor for the Brooklyn Rail, which is a uh, print and online arts and culture monthly and they let us put poems in it, so check out the poems. Um, I'm gonna turn things over to Joshua for a second. I'll give Joshua a more particular introduction when he, he gets up to read. Joshua, how are you? I'm wonderful, and I'm here in Santa Barbara with uh, Michelle DeTori, one of our readers. We work together at Santa Barbara City College, and uh, we're actually live streaming the event here too. Um, uh, I just, for this event, I got the invite from Anselm. I invited way too many people. So I had to uninvite people because I clearly can kind of follow directions, but they're all my friends, so it's okay. Um, so for this reading, I kind of really wanted to bring people who helped me get from A to B to C. And so each reader is really special to me. Um, and so Mel was super cool in grad school, actually, one day we were talking and she's we were talking about douchey DJ names. And she's like, DJ Ashtray, oh my God, with an E at the end. And I actually named my, renamed myself that and have used that name for, for a while. Jody and I were in a workshop together and their work just really resonated with me. And then their web series is super awesome and you have to check it out, um, Leaving Beauty. Uh, Michelle and I worked together and uh, mm -hmm. She has held the fort down here at work while um, for the first couple of weeks of the semester and kind of redecorated and is such a, an amazing uh, poet. And I'm, I'm so happy to kind of re uh, reintroducing ourselves as poet on this campus. And then uh, Vivian Storm is a storm, local celebrity. Everywhere we go, we get stopped if we're together. So just a really exciting reading and just the idea that like no matter what we do it's never good enough but when we're queer um and we're together it's never enough so um just really excited about the being invited today mm -hmm. thank you so I'm gonna have them like, yeah and uh after the reading's over everybody should go to the room that joshua and michelle are in and have some pizza um that we may not be in the same <laughs> cities. Uh, our first reader is going to be Mel Elberg. Mel's a poet and a collaborator. She's published poems in the Brooklyn Rail, Bathhouse, New Pinky, and the chapbook Rot Slash Red and elsewhere. Her first full-length book, The Kisser, is forthcoming. Please welcome Mel Elberg to the Rail Reading. Hi. Thank you, Josh and Ansel and Carolyn and everyone. Um, I guess I'm making a new project about numbers and letters and God. 
And these are some poems from that. Can you hear me fine? Good? Yeah, okay. Tell a soul, tell a soul, tell mine, mine the single digit of the world, for the God holds splintered into many small religions, objects, Tell a soul the sacrum of your poem, your palm, the ancient one you wrote with your wind pen in the trees when both you and the trees were very old. Tell me the spirits that swam down your wind throat, that swam in your darkness toward the mythical number three, the three of souls. Subject me to this soul encounter or nothing at the senior center of all holy rollers, nothing let me roll it to you through it. Will tell it will. Tell me one in a whisper whose soul purpose, whose soul purposeful, proposed or by accident. Tell me, tell me so my lonely, lonely, lonely garden grows. We've got cards on the ward against humanity. Is it even a window if I can't break it? For the strays to come in heaven is a little taste sent by blackberry via horse milk sucking on the foot of my bed i need a freak hell maybe a place you check in and out of body more murder land luther lucian lucy all saints what is a living wage a quarter back parador how do you measure life's qualities against cloth a gray foreground against rain. The heart is ruthless, reckless. Seabirds fly vertically past its seventh floor hospital window. The organ most merciless, the organ player's madness flying off the organ's handle, loose. Its hand in my hand goes numb. My blood moves one way, then thinks to go another. Turned, tuned. The heart is engorged, enraged. Who could ever engage with it and not stutter? Thunder, as hard as thunder. The heart's payback that does not, will not play. All things are present in lover that make up the non-lover world. My first perception of lover without name, my waiting for lover. Lovers work and my swan dive into it, our mutual friend, my history of love, my dream of lover, lover without me, before me, beyond me. I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I'm washing the dishes, I'm washing the dishes. Just awake now, just awake. I'm fucking Tess, I'm fucking Tess. Let the peace of this world moment be all of the world's peace. Dispersed love is also love. Deranged love is pure love. We ourselves are the perceptions. Don't wait for anything. We are those thoughts, but I don't want to say too much about this. Love about something, love over something, love into something, etc. The imperfect is paradise. And this is after Wallace Stevens poem, maybe with the same title. Oh, yeah. The imperfect is paradise, and God laughs, finessing the crack in my faces. Who is a creature who creates one word for myself and my opposite, bound and bolted together like sun showers, like moot points who, waiting and wanting to wait, make a meaning split the difference both ways, B-A-N-N-A-N-S. A river of fantasy laps at my lips piercingly aligned to break the perfect light down unexpectedly. A pain I think ages me at which God laughs knowing I am young. My sister wasn't old enough to go to school. She doesn't live in the basement. She doesn't live in the kitchen. She doesn't live in the bedroom. She lives in the garden where your name comes from. It is by all these rooms I answer to me now, my sister who will call me by the hand of a little device. Alphanumeric divine, to me now your acronym swiftly and live and cipher. The message is carried in a scrambled omelet from one kitchen to another. 
How special is the scrambler? Extra special. My silent prince, a girlish listener, listening, my midnight handler, number nine. Rachel Roach. Some of us have to speak about it with three second pauses, out in Albion with no well, up in Grass Valley, not much hair on the body, but somehow very obviously old. What are Rachel and I in the woods without anyone interrogating us? No service versus false consensus, heavy tin in our long silver ear slits cut from a free box planet. 500 years of drinking cold sun together, 500 lucky chances or lifetimes strike and fog speaks to us now and forever holds our peace. Throat red lotus. In your dream toned trousers, silk and green, the meaning is mercy, the medium infinite when repeating in row, row, rows, but you can't plant your lotus at the bottom of the pool of stitches on your dress for sleep. The water rock, rock, rocks that speak you dream in sand to plant your dream, dream, dreams. You'll weave like stocks in stocking caps that reach the heavens, the heavens for falling houses to fall back under their lids in thought. When the waking part leaves, part leaves to a meadow, a message translated, a message the song cannot complete, but almost. Okay, this is the last one. Its quietude is its power, its subtle dribble, its silent by turns spherical in the mythical turn of its letter. I could spend my life in a single letter of it like a long dead scholar before the invention of carving clay impressions a left i brought it home in my mind a left i carved it into a heaven a bet i painted it with my broomstick a bet i flew it away that's it Thanks so much, Mel. Thanks, everyone. Our um, next reader is going to be Michelle DeTori. Michelle is the author of numerous chapbooks of poetry, prose, and visual poetry, including Our Clean Heart, Fur Birds, How Hate Got Hand, and Bellum Letters, as well as the full-length collection After Cave from Asada Press. She's the recipient of an NEA fellowship, as well as a direct to artist grant from the Santa Barbara Art Collaborative for her public art project, The Poetry Booth. Her current projects include the collections Rainbow Weather and Feral Planets. By day, she works at Santa Barbara City College, training tutors and supporting students in the multimodal lab. Please welcome Michelle to the rail. Oh, am I not? Hi, everyone. All right, I'm gonna start with a poem called Near After, Queer After. And I just wanna make sure, can everyone hear me? Everything's no. good. No. Okay, cool. All right. Near After, Queer After. I never knew there were meadows on this side of the ruins, purple ferns and lilacs, clover, New sod overturned by hoofbeat. Your heart pounding. Pink liquid between the words. Sentences gone runny, slinky. And beyond marshland, plumply thrumming. Water fingers thickening between fronds. A twittering in the margins. A chatter of grasses. In morning, I see you standing at the window. I see you through my lashes. The sun shudders over your body. Good girls. 
Tell me about your sisters. Living is a secret we do in caves. Dens where the turntable never stops spinning. Drinking rum and cokes and twisting our hair into knots. Attempting to braid ourselves together. We're like those spooky twins. A pair of ticking clocks twitching in unison. We are most interested in the stories that begin with a missing girl. We find ourselves there. In here, we win. Take a drink and tell me how they left you at the mall. I'll apologize for them, for all of them, and for all the times, and for all the wicked things I've done. Hunter Heart, I hate nostalgia, a haunted house, 600 broken keys and desire like a ghost flitting about, making trouble, trembling and glossing, wearing us out. It's just an old filthy ruin, fantasy space come crumbling down, the teenage kitsch tacky of troubadours and tempest. The space we're unmaking in our ribs, rubbing out the moment, looking down. I don't own any of this. A record murmur static. Our kisses become machines. Our armless grammar, our armor. Feral poppies. Deep with justice, deep with help. A bloomlet let go, petals weeping the hangdog face. I made an atlas with notes from the old self, the world lost, rotting at the bottom of the sea. Will it come back? Things lie dormant for many years, but bloom again. It happens all the time. What planet built a clock in its memory? Some type of forgiveness that's just out of reach. Who would do such a thing? Those long robes are just a sign of weakness. Those men, they are so afraid. When the wind opens the door, the little absent human in me wants to cry out in fear but the bigger meaty self knows the wind is just the wind. The world is just the world. Outside another day turns dark like magic. My little dog too. She is made of the best earth. Her muzzle near my muzzle reminds me of my old alive heart. But then again, maybe it isn't so old, but it is ancient. Pink dolphin, there is never enough time. The moon makes a milky slick upon the sea. We are all mothers swollen with the hell of being human, of being in between. The houses we make have all the rooms, but the one where we can meet. That room floats in the belly of the beast slushing the whale road of alphabets and broken birds. Still, we can feel it, bright fins flashing, sometimes pretending is enough. And then I'm gonna throw this one in just because Mel, I think you mentioned Tess. Did I hear you say Tess? Okay. Mary were the maids of the Dubervilles. And let's talk about sexual assault and Stonehenge and Dewey Dell, which certainly does sound like a good name for a dancer opening her heart to me. Eye of Madonna through a peephole peering back at me, choreographed fish nest, fishnet flesh flashing, flickering me to the quick. Nobody taught this to me. I just knew 
licks of certainty as a curtain fell. And then, how am I doing on time? Do I have time for one more? I don't, I wasn't paying attention to the time. Yeah, one more. Okay. This one is actually a little on the, um, the longer side. It is um, a prose poem and it's called Where She Is. It's about a, um, it was inspired by, by this very old tree in Santa Barbara. Uh, it's a fig tree by the train station. It's where people actually shelter there in between the roots. Um, it's probably one of the most powerful places, at least to me, around here. Where she is. Her little house begins between the mountainous roots of the oldest fig tree in the city. The largest canopy dark and spreading like a kind cape over the cruelties of concrete. The roots break the surface of the concrete every day. And really they should just let it all crumble. The body is not so much a sieve for sunlight as it is its host. Her house is wedged where it is difficult to tell dirt from root. They are the same color and stick together and seem to form a poreless surface that is smooth and so comforting and is actually soft like human skin, not like a belly, but perhaps the ridge of shoulder blade. Remember what it must have been like to be pairs of bodies stuck together? The girl imagines as well what she cannot remember. Memory is also a type of skin or a type of paper. When she first became a ghost, the girl wanted to be painted over, erased. And so the dress was made with the thick brush paste of sticky erasure. It mapped an outline of the body and showed its edges, which is actually a memory of edges, a representation of where the body would be because she no longer had a body. Its erasure marked its presence. And at one time she thought the name for this might be brutality. Now there is so much she can see through. Every cell is a cover, is a layer, and time flows in and out and over itself. It alternately makes her tired and hopeful. It's a mystery that resists resolutions and assures that even in eternity, there is no boredom. Or rather, boredom is a locked bedroom without a house. And without a house, there's nothing else, at least not in thinking. She has only recently realized that she is also a type of time flowing in and out of herself. This cannot be reflected in a mirror. One of the first things she remembers learning upon becoming a ghost is the difference between reflection and emanation. And then she learned a third difference for which a word has yet to be invented. It has to do with learning and wanting and sensation how that finds surfaces and maps itself, reorganizing the sub subject. It is a very complicated process. You don't even have to touch. It can feel very good. Despair was her first spectral companion, was probably once a cat, was probably well beyond nine lives and ghost cat lives. Despair slept in the branches of the fig tree and purred when the wind blew. Despair can smell all the different centuries. Despair has known the tree a long time, listens to the tree's muffled pulses, translates the fragile glyphs into a type of tale. The girl ghost listens and pretends this is a type of sleep. Beyond the tree, there is a beach and ocean. The ghost girl goes out to the beach at night and puts her hands in the water and listens to the whales. In this way, listening is a type of feeling, a type of palpation. And though her hands are really absences of hands, they are much better at feeling these types of things. She hears the whales in enormous blue syllables. They know some things about stars. And in all the world, they are the very best experts on love. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Our next reader is going to be Jody Lynn. Jody is a queer trans AAPI poet and filmmaker. 
They find focus in creating work that engages individuals who have ever sought a connection with something spiritual. Their poetry can be experienced in Olney Magazine, Amethyst Review, Poetry Project Footnotes, and in Leaving Beauty, their video diary on YouTube. They were invited to complete a course of study at the Maisel's Documentary Center and was a fellowship recipient at Brooklyn Poets. Their short film, Borta, Queen of Tibet, a fearlessly honest autobiography about their recovery from schizoaffective disorder, was nominated for the Festival Prize at the Soho International Film Festival and received numerous other screenings. They are a graduate of the Art Institute at Harvard and Sarah Lawrence College. Please welcome Jody Lynn to the Rail Reading. Hey everyone. Hi, Jody Lynn, they, them pronouns. Um, yeah, I'm a poet, a filmmaker, and a voice hearer. I hear voices. Um, I've been hearing voices since I was a child. And my favorite voice is Wim, um, the manifestation of my wise mind. In times of crisis, she comforts me with details of my future. And during the global pandemic, she gifted me an entire manifesto of poetry and prose. Um, I combined that with my life story to create what I'm about to read for you, this untitled manuscript called, I'm sorry, this unpublished manuscript called The Tenderness of Glass. And, um, it's written in six parts, each part named after one of the Tibetan Buddhist bardos. And in part one, the bardo of life, I'm going to read a piece that is a petition to the goddess Paldin Lamo as she chooses her next body. Goddess, I call to you and you intervene. Wrathfully you come, radiant and pure, blue-bodied, emanating pure light through your skin, your soul, your blue body again, like the brave body you chose when you ascended the underworld. Protectress, riding the night sky, I call to you and you intervene. Have mercy on us. I petition you to protect the Dharma once again. Ride the night sky on your horse, wrapped in the now sacred skins of your only son. Goddess of wrath, queen goddess divine, like a holy terror riding the night sky, your son's tender skull in one hand, your holy scepter in the other, his brains and blood still warm in your fearsome grip. Your power leads you through the underworld and back. Goddess, Palinamo, choose me. Your blue skin turned clear light. Choose me as I choose you. Let me be you. Lifetime to life, cross with me. Goddess incarnate, let me be life. And the body she chooses is me, um, which leads me to this next section, which is essentially my origin story. This is piece two. They, them, now, then, missing, found. One breath in, another out, in and out. Don't know when it began, but suddenly it was over. Why do all queers have so many tattoos and smoke so many cigarettes? I wanted to be straight and then I met with fate and it was over and over and over. Three, in the Asia of the ancients, tribal women tattoo each other to keep from being stolen for sex. I have four tattoos, each one acquired within the year that I fell in love a flame lotus, a peacock feather, Narayana, a blue-bodied moth with evil eyes for wings, each one a map of my freedom, each one for you, four. He caught fish with his feet in the familial waters, the island he would share with me even if I never asked. With strong leathery hands, he, will, he built elaborate houses in trees. I was too small to climb there, but too big to carry up. So the stilted houses were mine to inherit when I was big enough, fearless enough to climb with bare feet and sun-kissed golden skin like him to that sweet shelter nestled there, misplaced and regal in a suburban backyard tree. Five, she, she told me I was thin skinned, she, with crooked fingers, she, bristles on a hairbrush, pain metal, combing thin skin from my tender scalp. There in the shower, 
Naked and small, I balanced on a wobbly footstool, the stool to make the reach easier on her back as the hot, hot water ran over me. She pressed on harder, she, the water, salty now, she. Was it the tears? Was it the sea? Was it the blood that rose up from my heart to the bristles, pain metal, brushing my innocence with venom hands from her venom heart? She. Thin skin torn tender from this little girl whose little mouth told the lie that was the truth that ruined the family, her family name. In part two, Bardo of Dreams, we're back in the realm of the goddess as she crosses through the underworld. Fight, goddess, fight. Goddess, take flight. Goddess, be brave. He couldn't be saved. The supreme sacrifice, my only son, heir to the land without Buddhism. I save the Dharma, this is my karma. Now to the underworld, the gift is the curse. My power is my true love devotion to this earth. Crossing through brings me wealth, crossing through brings me fame. I save the Dharma and I'm deified, adorned with sacred love. O Siddhartha, O glorious Siddhartha, hear my prayer. Fight, goddess, fight, goddess, take flight. Goddess, be brave, he couldn't be saved. The supreme sacrifice, my only son, heir to the land without Buddhism. I, I save the Dharma, this is my karma. Queen goddess divine, namaste soha, namaste soha, namaste soha. And then we enter the psychiatric hospital where I was for the underworld for five weeks. And I just have a, a couple more pieces, but this is two, two. I want to remember every detail, but my royal heart won't give it all back to me. I called the police and told them there were three human skulls under my bed. They came with the hazardous materials truck, expecting bodies, blood, carnage. Finding no skulls, the line of questioning went something like this. Do you know what day it is, miss? Do you know where you are? Do you know who the president is? When was the last time that you ate? When was the last time that you slept? Did somebody hurt you or try to hurt you? Something like this. I don't know what I said. I didn't pass the test. They asked me to close my apartment window. They suggested I grab my coat. They suggested I grab my keys and ID. I put on my fanciest coat and my fanciest hat, handed my keys, phone and ID to one of the officers as though she worked for me and I was escorted to an ambulance. A technician took my vitals and gave me the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that broke the power of my renunciate austerity, my 40 day almond milk fast. He assured me that I didn't need to worry. I was going somewhere safe. I wrote a letter that got the president shot. Could you take me to court? You have to show up for court or you'll be in even more trouble than you were in the first place. And I think I need a lawyer. Do you know what day it is? Oh God, I thought these questions again, but I realized I didn't know the answer. I shook my head. There's no court on Sunday, miss. It's Sunday and President Obama is ab alive and well, as far as I know. In fact, the first family just adopted a dog. This pulls us through the bardo of the psychiatric hospital. And, um, it goes like this, karma is constantly changing. I missed my chance to be the sacred queen. I was scared and in a split second, the fear changed my fate. Perhaps the consequence was life because if it were true that I could fly, I'd be up in the sky soaring with you. And now I suffer in that funny in-between place, grounded like a punishment, grounded time out. I've fallen out of love with life. Lastly, in part four, in the bardo of dying, this is where all the manifesto part begins, and I'll be ending here, but um, <laughs> it's about the many, um, the many lives of the reincarnation of the goddess, who is essentially the reincarnation of the queen of Tibet, and when she takes the throne, she has all kinds of fun, all kinds of love. This is the moment I feared the most. My intuition gave you to me. This premonition took you away. I take shelter humbly under your golden feet as we make love. As we make love, centuries pass between us. I've been chasing you for lifetimes to be with you in this way. 
At first your child, a beloved pet, another, your cherished friend, your mother's sister, closer and closer to finally arrive here in bed with you. The canopy billowing its softness touches us intermittently as you adorn me with lifetimes of tenderness, bending like heated glass, sweet baby kisses the strength of ages. I cried when we climaxed because I knew it would be our last time. Intuition gave you to me. This premonition took you away. What if I told you that we would have other lives together, I say. I let go and you live on. And because I love you, I let go and you live on. In 49 days, I am reborn. My purpose and undeniable love, a bond unlike any other mother to child, child to mother. I love you as you love me again and again and again, Nirvana. Thank you. Thank you, Charity. Thank you so much. Now uh, we're gonna bring to the stage Vivian Storm. Vivian is a Milwaukee native with the energy of a million storms. She has lived in Santa Barbara for over seven years and has helped cultivate spaces encouraging joy and belonging. Her love for performing and entertaining shines through each of her performances. She hopes to leave her audience better than they came. Her love for joy drives her work, allowing her to coach others to be their best self. Storm chasers, unite and hang on to something because a storm is coming. Please welcome Vivian to the rail reading. One. I'm a little hoarse because I've been playing shows or whatnot. And um, however, I am here and ready to work. Okay. So um, the first kind of um, couple, well, actually, I'm going to start with one that I wrote. Before, I am not a person who writes poetry, but I do write song lyrics. Okay. But today I made an exception for you all. Okay. So the first one that I will be reading, I wrote, and it's called uh, How Lovely. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you will never be enough heard many times before. Who gets to decide this about me? How do you know beyond what you can see? What if you choose to leave me be? Would you finally see beyond what you believe of me? Knowing nothing but everything, how lovely that must be. Okay, and then, so I'm gonna read some from this amazing book that I found. You know what, I'm old, but I do be watching TikTok, okay? And um, one day I had went through, um, I was scrolling and this young person just got me. And you know how you just, you're scrolling and you just, you, you hit something and some sad music comes on and you start crying for no reason. If you don't know, now you know, okay, that happened to me. And it was some sad music in his poem. And I just read it. I was like, what is wrong with my eyes right now? Um, but this young person, his name is Jacob Ramirez. And um, he has a whole collection of, of poems um, about like who he is, like where he was and where he's become. And it's um, titled, As I Sit With Who I've Come. Okay, and this is the book. And I ordered just off Amazon. It was really cute. Um, but I've been reading, I read the whole thing in like an hour because it was so good. Um, but there were some of them that kind of spoke to me. So I wanted to share some with you today. Um, <clears throat> the first one is acceptance. It says, it felt like I was a burden, my existence, a mistake. Every day was a battle, a competition to see if I would break. I wanted to scream. I wanted to hide. Perhaps I even wanted to die. All I knew was that it was true and there was nothing that I could attempt to even do. Choosing to be free, free to love whomever wasn't just for me, but for, for him as well. His dreams are mine inside. He still resides with patience and hope that they'll be fulfilled. Experiencing your love relights his existence, giving meaning to a voice, one that was never heard. This next one is called A Secret No More. 
The sun grew brighter. The sky became wider. I could finally breathe. A vast space between, sorry, a vast space began to open for which I could find hope in. A new place, a new feeling. I was finally beyond the horizon. Another one. That's my space. Okay. Well, I'll go to my second one that I I wrote. Okay. <clears throat> it's titled Can God Change Their Mind? <laughs> Can God Change Their Mind? You seem to keep what was and hold it dear. Change was created to keep it fresh. But why offer me what has caused so many to rot? What was the point of it all? Generation after generation at a stall, all to continue what was? This can't be what was meant for us. Can God change your mind? If not, please hear me. Can you please change your mind? <laughs> um, and this next one um, I have is um, sort of my story, right? Um, and it's, uh, I'll do just a, a, a portion of it and then um, kick it over to you, uh, Josh. All right. Um, it is, um, I wanted to, give you all of me, but you only wanted the parts that you picked for me. And now I must choose whether I want to keep you or lose you. I can't keep fighting. I can't keep putting up this fight. It's where I'm going is not where I've been. This can't be it, I want more. There's more to life than your expectations that you set for me. Take off the anchor and set me free and watch what I will be now that I'm free. Thank y'all for listening. Thank you, Vivian. And now we're going to hear from Joshua Escobar. Joshua is the author of the poetry collection Bareback Nightfall from Noemi Press, which was awarded the 2023 Bo Huston Award. His novel Demons of Eminence is forthcoming in the Fellow Travelers series at Publication Studios. He directs the creative writing program and Title V grant at Santa Barbara City College. Please welcome Joshua DJ Ashtray Escobar. <laughs> Uh, thanks everyone for coming and uh, I'm so wonderful uh, so happy that uh, to be invited uh, my first first poem is um, called Utopia and there is warm manufacturing in South California hills you know hills plus acrylic idleness once I understood death now unpackaging angel hair inheriting loop circular now crashing milk and stewed tomatoes. Now the TV singing, take it to take it, light up anus 3000s. Now sip broth. Now I'm a boy playing tag at the Mary Lytle Nature Center under the milkweed manzanita something patch. Flex of sun reach the bare e messy earth. Other kids call laugh hide from the one who is it or who they think is. Now I sleep in the mailbox a saint anonymous and wasting honey mercurial calavera moss in winter he fought in two guerras he eats rocks rust is blamed for headless snakes needed for earthquakes e honey mercurial calaveras now I miss the way we obsessed over one another sun and moon we do all the I see you stole from work 
and I'd make enchiladas. We'd lie to Grimes or Chisara Evora, have sex and gossip, and then scrub each other with tree tea tree oils. I wish now you were drooling over me, like after queer cumbia in a sleeveless yellow tee plus long black jeans. I wish we could wake up to the sky hickeyed, oak trees naked, thrashing, stirring. I long for old school block parties, all the barbecues, dance halls lit by ill beats and rupture. I wish people would embrace others outside of slaughter. I want a future where every chingona gets a free bicicleta painted purple. And this one is about um the M the subway in New York. Is it <laughs> it's been a while since I lived there? Is it called the MTA still? Is it or is that the right name? All right, okay. Kicked out of bathhouses, top of the chart stream police, condomless quarantine, banned through urban renewal rather than factory law. Back seat nine to five, front page shouty match. It was all you can do. Smash hit show tunes, back to back commercials, kale juice, spend thrift callings, horses, and fuel efficient thrall amid deco, fabuloso, hairy, flexing like $3 pliers, toss glitter, wrap it like it's your birthday, gazettes of perpetual bliss, smashed in back windows, relaxed on goings, cryptic vaults, walking arm in arm with a thakaria buzz. Drumming out the fire hydrant, pink shirted, shirted agonies, hugs, hip left turns, Moher, Mojado marathon over the fuck this lounge graffiti, ruby phone digits, connect the dots, body politic, ride him until I see two colors and my love drags me down, pay per minute three way kissing, bumping secrets in the gay cabal, neck with me, pumped lashes, closeted soldier wants to know if you're okay. Mod Chicano loves up on this emergency emergency mysteriousness, rough kilobytes of flirting, mostly illegitimate criminals who use ghetto objectively. Grody skateboard, Grody beer beard, Grody rules, crew cuts, scrunchies, cranberry lipstick, once in a lifetime decaf turnstiles, bilingual condoms. The platform is crowded with spent and scented passengers from the 80s, Dolores Park, $70 spaghetti, luxury cock ring fighting. The last train is so cheeky, cranky, portent coyote, finally gets a break. Scruff pup ojos, broke glasses. What am I, marvelous rot, sliding. So this one is called uh, DJ, I Was Just Like You from my book. Uh, and Bomb published it a while back and it just opened so many doors. So thank you, Bomb and the Brooklyn Rail for your support. DJ, I Was Just Like You, circulation of the marvel of the fragile same. I am tempted to cry when they shine while counting the number of illnesses alleviated with a tan. I've been trained to be unsympathetic to the messes you make for yourself. I give out medicine for free on Sierra. My moans no zero. Ill honey bed. Jealous I can sleep. Jealous you can spit. Burning sage to have my way. I didn't stop for them and their Herculean love of ass. But if I wouldn't have made it, Gay bars never played the music of my late brother, but repeats and zippy conversation in a society discovered to death. Exo pain, yellow breaths, avocado oil covers my naked doubts, gorgeous fools beside the verisimilitude of setting. I'll just read a couple more. This one's called Ashtray's Music. And I keep showing you because like, uh, my book is pretty graphic, like literally. 
and figuratively <laughs> not graphic anymore after Kim Petras's new album but all right uh Ashtray's music you catch me staring at an egotistical urinal Friday meanly like any other lime juiced American love it's quite possible that threats move about in the darkness unless Copernicus is thrown into whatever we're making I fill myself with cold water to the core. Tomorrow would be your birthday. You are a long way back. Your revamped eyes on Prasita. Donna Fortune has her own pedal now. And it's not because we eat less. Tomorrow is for the post office with some possibility of getting kitty stamps. My ears get vexed with your hands on them. And I actually care about the future even though I'm not enough for this legislature. He says, love means to finish in Spanish rather than the English. The wind burns with your absence as your atoms stir inside my chest. We cave at our own risk. You make me ooze, immature venom, blow my fantasies. Coming early is never a problem because you have to have me. Deserving nights become robotic, and other guys make me hot. I had their fever, and you said my skin was like a banana peel. My feelings get in the way, but there's never much I can do about them, except rest when I have fever, and dance and mess to get over the chills. I am not like your male, covered with a blanket in a back seat. This is how I'll wind up. And this one with even different typeface is uh, called the Ides of Arcana. No one eats eggs, so sleep on Jacaranda. No one eats eggs, so sleep on Jacaranda. No one eats eggs. The Ides of Arcana lays out government issue blankets over the gates. When boys jack are set up, so sleep on just like I used to. Viejas take two Jacaranda. No one eats eggs, so Foco Taco stands set up before we close. Everyone munches, so sleep on under the tables. The mercurial wind is picking up. Votives, succulents, chickens fly, jacaranda. Dead suns steal our flash, blue and pink. No one eats eggs, so sleep on, jacaranda. No one eats eggs, so sleep on, jacaranda. No one eats eggs or mops. The floodlights fall, so sleep on backwards. Disposable semis quiet while salient. Jacaranda, no one eats eggs. Hovenez itching for cash go. Luckily, the vans sleep on, circled. Three men clinging a tarp get dragged into the pond, Jacaranda. Six suns lick our orange-yellow flesh. No one eats eggs, so sleep on, Jacaranda. No one eats eggs, so sleep on, Jacaranda. No one eats eggs. Traffic now so thick. Hustler 99 and me drive with no headlights and trip on the fumes. The eyes of Arcana walks to the beach, working along the way, and arrives, so sleep on, 90 bucks richer. The Inland Empire is the way to go, Jacaranda. Bored suns flood our streets until we are the same trickling light. No one eats eggs, so sleep on, Jacaranda. No one eats eggs, so sleep on, Jacaranda. And I'll just read one more. Um, this one's a little longer. And by a little longer, I mean like three minutes. All right. This one's called Atomic Gir Girls Sachu de la Presa. In a parking lot filled in a parking lot, feeling the casual stop of muscle, vehicles dead asleep alongside sucko rises, sore haircut mess, never grew up thinking I'd be a cocksucker. Sun dying valley, head and shoulders awake, you know, treasure, fiends waiting, with more sacks than Santa for a cheap ride out of Pomona. Stray flyers are piercing the pepper trees on the 10, while I seduce, try seduce, revolve my beat up tires. Left turn, a refinery, demos, anti-gravity, and that we're super broke. Another parking lot, 
straight boxer wants only papa's fritas. Yellow light, a billow bites into the junction of avocado messengers, scuba perros, peach tree mujeres. The Ides of Arcana lets me ride in her truck bed alongside weed whackers and jugs of herbicide. We talk voltage showers and froth, lips and Mexica juice. I used to mix brackish water with old tequila, polka dot strawberries and prep, aged in her garage, popular with our broke ass friends. Dirt channels inside her truck as it steals onto the trails to lavender chaos. My neighborhood appears across Cayente Valley. By November, it will be abandoned. The air cold enough to bust windows and for desperate coyotes to dip into the houses of pigeons. Others get used to this mess. The copper strays eyeing our back, CDs and old magazines in the riverbeds, the citrus fest. The devil stands in yellow drapes and a high collar Holding, holding a sack of wild savoya, the rug out under him will outlive us. The valley draws so many mysterious gente, juicy tongues, juicy ears, end up confetti. Your friends die or become dead to you. Night curls up in the dirt in the valley of sun. Valley of sun where I felt love and it was citrus where I felt love and it was burnt cilantro. Valley of sun where I felt love and it was heat and retro. Valley of sun where I felt love and it was at noche. Valley of sun where I felt love and it was bananas in El Graje. It was no anchor. Where I felt love and it was later, later. Where I felt love and I was pretty oblivious. Valley of Sun, where I felt love, and it was Chingona and Disco Waiwa Hesa. Where I felt love, and it was Chile slash and burned. Where I felt love, and it was Chihuahua Beauty Supplies. Valley of Sun, where I felt, and it was. Thank you, Brooklyn Rail, for having us. Thank you, Joshua. Thanks so much for reading and putting this together and bringing everybody together today. Thank you, Mel and Michelle and Jody and Vivian. Um, it's been great to hear you all. And now we'll do what we do at the end of these readings and throw open everybody's mics to say hello and goodbye as we head out into the rest of the day. Thank you. 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 Thank you.